So being being a Marine myself of nine years and 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 having been in the military, in the Marine Corps, active duty for nine years, and never knowing what a VA loan was, then getting out of the military, still not knowing what a VA loan was. Like no one ever sat me down and said, Hey, brother, here are your benefits now that you're gonna become a civilian, right? And then when I finally found out what the VA loan was, the the scuttlebutt or the rumor on the street was it's not a great loan. Right. And and so and 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 as a veteran, you instantly believe that because of the way that the VA lacks in so many different things, you know? And then you do some research on it and you find out that the VA loan is the absolute best loan product in the market period and the story. Curse looking clean with his whole sales team. We ain't come to talk nonsense. It's all about the process and profits until we make a billion from deposits. He never slacked and teach him to take action. So far from whack and never gave up his passion. Can't catch him lacking. Down on his fashion, he forever stacking, running up all the cash. In. Real estate mastermind, check out his book, he gave us the blueprint. Uh, really can't hate the grind, put in the work, no making excuses. Uh, quit is a waste of time. You made it this far, don't make it like useless. Uh, pull up and taste the wine. He got the flavor, mixing the juice. All right, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Freedom Achiever Podcast. My name is David Adam Kurz. I'm the founder of the Freedom Organization, a coaching and consulting company for real estate professionals in the United States of America. So excited to have this podcast consistently going on, and I'm excited that you guys listen to it. And check this out. 60% of the people that are listening to this podcast on YouTube right now are not subscribed. So I'm going to go ahead and need you guys to go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share this, let people know what we're talking about here. Why? Because we are consistently working to bring freedom achievers to the table to provide value, to talk about their lives, to talk about their businesses. We get it deep so that you can walk away with something super solid for your life and business. Today, I have the absolute pleasure to bring on Alex Jimenez, known as AJ, uh, AJ Nashville on, uh, on on Instagram. Brother, thanks for doing this with me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. So I, I was I was uh, doing a little research on you on social media, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's funny because you know there's so many people afraid to post certain things. And so you have a love, you have a love for veterans, which means you have a love for the country, which means you also have a love for guns, cars, and baseball. Um, <laughs> if, listen, if that doesn't spell America, I don't know what does, right? Right. right. <laughs> Dude, and then and then somewhere in there, there's a mortgage professional doing loans for people. <laughs> I, I would use the professional word lightly. Um, just <laughs> let's just call it a mortgage. <laughs> it depends on who yes. I'm talking to. So, dude, well, thanks for doing the show with me. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. So, so something you mentioned to me earlier, and and it kind of tugged on me a little bit. You created a program to teach people about the VA loan, mm-hmm. and and I want to touch on this a little bit because I, I first of all, thank you for doing that. Um, and, and I'm going to dig through some stuff with you on this because I get very frustrated with the amount of education, knowledge, and information that's out there about the VA loan. So being being a Marine myself of nine years and, and, and having been in the military, in the Marine Corps, active duty for nine years, and never knowing what a VA loan was, then getting out of the military – still not knowing what a VA loan was. Like no one ever sat me down and said, hey brother, here are your benefits now that you're gonna become a civilian, right? And then when I finally found out what the VA loan was, the the scuttlebutt or the rumor on the street was it's not a great loan. Right. And and so and 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 as a veteran, you instantly believe that because of the way that the VA lacks in so many different things, you know? And then you do some research on it, and you find out that the VA loan is the absolute best loan product in the market. Period. End the story. Yep. And and it pisses you off, man. Like I, you know, it pissed me off. I've used my VA loan. Listen, I was in the Marine Corps nine years. I've been out since two thousand four, so this makes it twenty years that I've been out of the military. I used my VA loan for the first time, but mind you, I've been selling real estate nineteen years. And I used my VA loan for the first time two years ago. 
And and it's crazy, but here's like here's the crazy part. I've helped so many people along the way get into a VLO. Yep. And and it wasn't until it's like I got a buddy of mine, uh, Nick Sarnicola owns a, 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 a company that does uh, solar panels, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and he said to me, he goes, our best salespeople are the ones who actually own solar panels. Like they bought them, they went yep. through the process, they had them installed, they know what to expect, they know the benefits, right? And so since then, I could easily say, that my conversation about a VA loan, my conversation with a veteran is significantly better. Then I've, it, over the past few years, I've associated myself with uh, with guys who run really great programs like the Millionaire Veteran and things of that nature. And and we've talked about how to house hack using right. a VA loan and how to build wealth and how to help veterans build, you know, a, 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 a platform they could actually live and or retire on right so so talk to me a little bit about like what inspired this to be i know you have two brothers that are marines what inspired this to be and why it's so important to you yeah so the biggest thing is this at the end of the day and and you and i talked about this off camera there's an obligation to serve those who have served right we have the things just like this podcast that we get to do on a daily basis and we get to do it because of people who have have signed up and taken an oath to defend that right to do so. We can put this on multiple media platforms and say pretty much whatever it is we want to say because of that right. So in, because I did not serve, I feel an obligation to give back to those who did. Uh, when I say obligation, I use that word loosely in the fact that I, I don't feel required. I feel called to do things in order to give back. I feel called because I look at people like my brother, like my nephew, like my grandfather. And I think to myself, how would I want these people to be treated as well? And if that was my brother or my grandfather or my nephew sitting there and they were receiving this service that I am a professional, right? And I, again, I use that word in quotations because if you hear me talk to some of these people, you'd be like, that doesn't sound professional. I'm talking to my people. Um, the program, just to clarify, was created. There was many of us that, that went out to Michigan of all places in the middle of COVID uh, Michael Fisher is who I have to give major credit to in the, the creation of VMA, Veteran Mortgage Advisor. But the goal was to go out to provide a better experience to those who had accessibility to the VA home loan benefit. You, we, we talk about creating wealth, right? This is where we need to get in front of those E4s, E5s that are just deciding what it is they want to do with the next phase of their life. And we need to demonstrate to them how they can utilize this benefit in order to create wealth. Go out to uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina, which everybody knows is the hottest vacation spot that you can go to and uh, and buy a duplex. Right. And split it up amongst some of your buddies. And then when you PCS somewhere else, you can go and kind of compound that thing. Uh, these are conversations that that the military should be having with with their their um, people in the military. Right. They should be having that conversation. I believe, too. I, I believe there's a little conspiracy there. Right. Yeah. Because. You know, if 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 you teach your if you teach your your active duty military men and women financial literacy and wealth, they won't do 20 years. Nope. Or 25 nope. or 30. The only ones that are gonna do 20, 20, 20 plus years are the ones that are there because of uh uh pride and commitment. And nope. and and that number, in case a lot of you were wondering. You know, that number is not as big as most people think it is. Right. You know, and and like, I don't know about your brothers and why they joined the service. You mentioned that your grandfather was in the Navy. So it's kind of like a family thing. Mm-hmm. For me, I had no family members in the military. I didn't even know the difference between the Army, the Marine Corps, the Navy and the Coast Guard and the Air Force. Everybody was G.I. Joe. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so. You know, I I thought I thought everybody was army and there was a special force called GI Joe and the Transformers were going to help us defeat the enemy. You know, like like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and I just had no knowledge. But when I was 18 years old, and I was living the life that I was living, um, I knew that I needed significant change in my life. Yeah. You know, so I, I I I I met two Marines, and you know I could tell you that story at another time, but. 
completely changed the outlook of my entire life. Yep. You know, from that very moment, from meeting them in the mall, them yep. walking one way and me walking the other way and me turning around, and look at them like they were some hot chicks. You know what I mean? Like, like I literally turned around like, damn, who's that? You yeah. know, <laughs> like, they had the uniform on, you know, they were rocking and rolling. And dude turned around. He looked at me at his eyes crossed or I'm sorry, his arms crossed. And he looked at me and said, you want to talk to me, don't you? Mm. And I was like, damn, this guy's fucking radar is on fire. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, and I ended up talking to him and, you know, long story short, nine years in Marine Corps and 10, you know, 20 years as an entrepreneur. It's been, I I am who I am because I made that decision. Right. Uh, But I knew I, 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 when I hit nine years, I made, a conscious decision. I said, you know, if I if I re if I enlist one more time, even for three years, mm-hmm. that's going to put me past ten, past twelve. You know, and I said, if I'm gonna do twelve, I might as well do twenty. Yep. And at that time, at that time, I had earned my bachelor's degree, and I was working on my master's, and I was kind of like, again, ignorant. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get out of the military. And I'm going to go pick up that corner office in Central Park that I deserve because I now have a bachelor's degree, right? And so, you know, I didn't know that people with bachelor's degrees didn't really get good jobs. And so, <laughs> <laughs> Different than you what know? we were taught growing up, right? Usually it was the, yeah. uh, the bachelor's degree is what got you, the Ferrari and everything else. And then you become an adult and you're like, the bachelor's degree just gets me something better than nothing, but it doesn't get me a yeah. lot. You know, so yeah. yeah, it's interesting, man. It's it's a very interesting, you know, thought process that one goes through, and 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 it's funny how naive I was. And I grew up in a home with an educated mom who was a school teacher, like who had degrees, who like, you know, a, a, and it just like it wasn't a topic of conversation in my house, yeah. you know. So it's interesting that you're doing what you're doing because this is a topic of conversation that needs to be had at a high level. Could you imagine if they taught, you know, like instead of giving out math for Marines when you're in E2, like, you know, if if they gave out like financial literacy books and taught you how to invest in insurance policies and how to use your VA loan to, you know, create wealth by buying the duplex or triplex in 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 lejeune you know and 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 uh and living in one side and renting out the other side and then like bouncing when you get orders and and just leasing out the whole thing and having a property working for you and giving you money all the time across across the street from a military base that will never ever ever be shut down like (laughs) you know what i mean yep and, and people, here's the thing, people like myself have the responsibility to do that. My my brother's an instructor um, at Camp Johnson currently, and we've talked about the opportunity to come in and talk to his Marines about exactly that. And here's the thing, just to be clear, I'm not licensed in North Carolina. I don't do business in North Carolina, but I want to go serve the people in North Carolina for a couple of different reasons. Those people deserve to be educated about that specific thought process. In addition to that, those people will spread amongst the country and they will be able to relay the message to other people. The the military cannot stop a civilian from hosting an event out off base that says, hey, we're going to do this financial literacy class. Right. They can they can keep me from going on base. um, But I'm not there to brand me. I'm there to provide a service to individuals who have earned it and deserve the right to be able to utilize their financial uh, situation wisely. You know, my nephew, um, he is he is a year and a half in right now. He's currently stationed in Hawaii, uh, which I'm sure he's having a miserable time there, right? Um, but yeah, same conversation. Horrible, horrible place to live. It is. Same, same <laughs> conversation. But uh, the difference is he can't buy anything on the Hawaii because he doesn't make enough, you know, in, in his current role. Expensive. It's it's way too expensive, but as he PCS is, you know, he has opportunity, and it's, it's it's like my brother, he bought a house in California because that's where he was stationed when they moved to North Carolina. His wife's a veteran; she's a she's got a disability rating, so she bought the house, right? And so now they have two homes. Now, when we look at that in the future, there's there's more things they can compound. They have my advice. That's two people. That's two of many many people, and we know that the military is very small, especially the Marine Corps. 
two people is not enough. So if we commit yeah. to doing this at a higher level, we can serve more people. Man, you know, there's got to be higher education on the VA loan. There also has to be, you, you mentioned disability a couple of times. There also has to be a high level conversation about disability. Yeah. And and the sharks that are out there trying to, you know, take your money on disability, you yep. know, and and it's 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 tough. Again, naiveness. Right. The the Marine Corps teaches you to 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 that. You're not human. Yeah. Suck Marine Corps teaches you that you're not human, that you're a fucking monster, yep. that, you know, whatever pain you feel is weakness leaving the body. That you know you were designed to be bigger, better, stronger than everybody else, and you know, and if you got some pain or some ailment or PTSD or whatever the case is, suck it up, Buttercup. You yep. know, yep. and so when you get out of the military and you talk about disability, you go, Nah, I'm good. I can handle my shit. I don't. I don't need this. I. I can handle it. You know. Yeah. And yeah. then one day somebody convinces you to go to the VA and, and apply for at least the simplest disability. And then yep. you walk into the VA and dudes are in line in front of you with no legs. Yeah. And you're like, what kind of piece of shit am I trying to get disability when dudes got no legs? Yep. But the problem is that if you rate it, you rate it. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't apply for disability until two and a half, three years ago. Again, yeah. I've been out of the Marine Corps since 2004. Bro, 2004. Yeah. I was in from 1995 to 2004. It's literally been 20 years since I got out of the Marine Corps. Yeah. You know, and I just applied. You know how many years of, of disability deserving I, I lost? And I'm 90% disabled right now. Yeah, they don't make, you it, know? They don't make it easy. And they don't make it easy on purpose, you know. Um, yeah, I've helped course. a couple of my friends file and, and I've, I've let them utilize my office to print off paperwork and timelines and incident reports and so on and so forth, you know, and, and, and it's ridiculous. And here's the thing. There's a personnel file with everything that, that they're printing off. There's a personnel file that has all that information contained in it. Right. I had a buddy of mine, it's Humvee got hit. You know, there's a, there's an incident report that exists that ties him to that Humvee that was hit. That would have a lot to do with his hearing and everything else, right? Because if you get hit by an RPG, there's a good probability that your ears are kind of messed up now, you know, not to mention the other pieces of your body that may have got impacted from that, that impact, right? But instead, they say, no, nah, you're going to have to bring us the information and you're going to have to. So that's why a lot of these people, like you said, they're, they're they don't want to do the work <laughs> and they're utilizing the attorneys and everyone else that's scalping a little bit off the top. Listen, that it, I, I tell my brother this all the time, <clears throat> and I tell my nephew this, document, document, document. Every single piece that happens, you are a human being. You are a person that you will get injured. You will have things that are traumatic that will happen that you need to document. But when you leave, you have to have that documentation accessible and ready. You keep every piece yep. of paperwork. Yep. That's just called protecting yourself, you know, yep. so... Yeah. I, got, I got a buddy of mine that that I helped him buy a couple houses and one day it dawned on me and I was like, hey, what's your what's your disability rating? Yeah. And he's like, I don't have one. Yeah. And I was like, Tony, I was like, you you just did you just did you did six years in the Marine Corps. You you've been shot at, you've had RPGs fly your way. Yeah. You've got hit by shrapnel. And now you're trying to do another 14 years in the Air Force mm. and you don't have a rating. Right. I go, you insane. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> and the crazy part is, you know, this he goes, he, he signs a few papers, he puts in some stuff that I told him that you know he should put in. Yeah. He saw one doctor, 100 percent disability rating instantly. Yep. <laughs> Not to mention the money it saves them on the funding fee. You know, I, I got to not to mention the money that it saves him in taxes in the state of Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Tennessee, Florida, Texas. Uh, I got a client right now. Twenty eight thousand dollars. This is funding fee. He's buying a, a two point one million dollar house. Right. He, without question, has had circumstances that would provide to him at minimum a 10 percent disability rating. Instead of having that filed, he's paying an additional twenty eight thousand dollars that the VA is charging him to ensure or guarantee that loan. 
that's going to come out of his pocket. We should be paying him that money, right? I, yeah. I get it, it at minimum 10%, but there could be a lot more. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah, man, it's it's ridiculous. By the way, I'm sure that he can go get tinnitus before he closes. Yeah, so exactly, you know what I mean. <laughs> well, we talked about it. He closes. He closes tomorrow. But we we've, we've had this conversation when he purchased his last house. It's like, bro, listen. I know factually you were involved in these things based on the things you told me. Like, go get it. It belongs to you. And he doesn't. I don't, I'm sure you know this, but there's a rule um, that I found not long ago. Mm -hmm. That if he closes tomorrow and he has that funding fee attached yep. to the back of his loan because you know he don't pay it up front, yep. and he goes and gets tinnitus next week, yeah, he can submit paperwork to have the funding fee removed. Correct. They'll they'll refund it based on the way it was received. So if it was financed, they yeah. would take it off the loan, so on and so forth. So yeah, and that's yeah. that's a huge thing. That's a huge money saver. You know, huge. huge they recast saver. that payment. It's twenty eight thousand dollars less of a payment on a month to month basis. Yep. Listen, I, I'm excited that you're doing this for veterans and it, it, it means the world to me. So thank you for doing that, um, yeah. you know, because I, I really believe there's got to be a lot more conversation having, a, you know, ha having having had about it, you know, yeah. and and <clears throat> I hate to say this, but, you know, I know that they're doing it on purpose because, like I said, why would you stay in if you were making residual 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars a month off properties? Right. Like, we're, why would you stay in the military? So it's it's a method for them to stay, keep you keep you tied down. But it's also a method to where they don't have to spend a lot of money and they can make money. Yep. You know, just like you're a guy that's about to pay twenty eight thousand dollars. You yep. know, I bought my house and thank God I had I saved on my funding fee because it was pretty up there too. Yep. You know, <laughs> and um, and and knocking on wood, I can save on these taxes sometime soon. If the VA works with me. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a trip. You know, yep. um, so so and and the, the the important thing here is you actually never served. No. That's awesome. I like, you know, and I grew up Southern California. Right. This is back when Southern California was normal. I remember 29 <laughs> Palms and, and March. Air, I, I was right down the road from March Air Force Base. I remember people coming back from Desert Storm. I remember being a child in awe of what I perceived as these heroes that just came back from this war. I remember tanks driving down the road. They were big homecomings, right? I remember <laughs> those things. And I remember seeing those people at that time thinking, wow, these are real heroes. Like, I'm not a person that idolizes Superman or LeBron James or, or people like that. I'm a person that looks at human beings and what they contribute to society. And that's where I get the hero sense from. And when I was a child, I was witness to those people coming back and, and I grew up wanting to be a pilot. That's what I wanted to do. Um, unfortunately, my eyesight, according to my eye doctor, if I did not have corrective lenses, a bus could be coming down the road and I wouldn't see it till it physically hit me. Uh, and he's probably <laughs> right. So that took the pilot idea away, but yeah. So all that contributes, right? Everything in life contributes to what, ex what, what exists now. And that's, that's part of that reason of why I feel um, this calling to do what I do. That's awesome, man. Well, congratulations to you for doing that. And, right. and thankful for your brothers and your grandpa and their service to the country. Um, you got a couple kids in baseball and you're always yeah. on the field with the bombers. So yep. talk to me a little bit about that, man. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I do, I have a daughter that plays travel ball for two different, uh, two different leagues. And then she also plays rec ball. And then I have a son that plays open, uh, baseball, which is similar to travel, just on a smaller scale. Uh, and then I'm the commissioner for Bethesda Rec League, which is the rec league that both of them play for. And so it it's nonstop. Um, I'm probably at the field five days a week, you know. Yeah, but, I bet. My 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 two girls are in volleyball. Yeah. And it's like, if it's not school, it's the club. If it's not a club, it's a tournament. If it's not a tournament, it's something else. It's the park. Yep. It's the coach. Yep. Yep. You know, it's yep. it's consistent. It's all the time. You yeah. know, and then it's weekends and then it's traveling to Orlando, to other places. You know, it's 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 heavy duty, man. Yeah. How do you yeah. find time for all this? Prioritization. So you said it. It's heavy duty. Right. But I, I took a step back in my mortgage side of things and decided I was going to prioritize the things that are limited in time in my life. The things that are limited in time are my children growing up and the memories that we can instill and install in them as they're doing so. And so I made a decision. 
am I worried about being the top producer in a mortgage company or am I worried about being the top producer to my children? And, and I chose my children because I had bankrupted them of that early on, right? I, I didn't give them yeah. what it was they deserve. So the prioritization, when I go to the field, this thing right here, you're not, you're not getting my attention. If you call my phone and I'm at the field, I'm going to see my daughter hit that home run. I'm not going to listen to whatever is urgent at 6.30 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon, right? Those are That's the cool. – it, it's just – it's prioritizing – and I will never get another shot at this again. I will always get another shot at serving clients in the future. It may not be the same client, but as long as I have the mortgage business, I, I can I can recover that. I can't recover the minutes that are lost with my children. Yep. Talk to me about those baseball bats behind you. What's up with that? Man, so um, it's funny. So th this is my daughter's first bat that she ever swung with. This is my son. Nice. They're, they're both their first bat. Um, little things like that are treasures to me. You know, I, I, I remember them going out to the field four and five years ago and, and being out there and just being these little, little people that are learning. And so, you know, some people have different treasures and that's okay. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's not, but this is a treasure to me. It's, it's my children's yeah. first bat. I have their first uniform. I have their first glove, you know, I, it just yeah. interesting at that and, and the memories that are attached to it. That's pretty sick, man. You can see I got the babe over here. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I yep. got this. Um, I went out to Louisville, Kentucky. Nice. See the, the Slugger factory. Yeah. I picked this up. This is the Babe Roof replica. That's badass. But yeah, I love this thing, man. I sit yeah. in my office and like thinking, and I'm like swinging my bat around. My wife's like, "You're gonna knock the shit out." There's so much electronics in here. <laughs> right, it's, it's the very thing we tell our kids not to do, and then we do it as adults, right? You know, and then we do it as adults. Yeah. <laughs> this one, this one's got. Yeah. So we put um, the goal of our coaching company, or the goal of my coaching company, is to affect a million people in their lives and businesses. Yeah. And so we had this made where it's got my name and it says affect a million yeah. lives. That's bad. You know, yeah. So, yeah. So I love this thing, man. Yeah. And, and here's something you can relate to. I already know that you, you already know this. I set a very similar goal. I wanted to impact a million people in my lifetime in a positive way. Right. And here's what we realize. And, and again, I know you do as well. We look at a million of anything. And a million is a lot because we've always been told as kids and everything else that a million is big. It's such a big number that most people can't comprehend that number. But then as we look at the trickle effects, so for example, this podcast, you may impact, and I'm just throwing a number out there. There could be 15,000 people that listen to this podcast. And of those yep. 15,000, that's part of that million, that trickle effect, right? And we have such a massive ability of impact to individuals that a million becomes such a small condensed number that I'm not saying it is a small number, but I'm saying it's a number that we we look at and we're like, wow, this is doable. This is something that we can actually knock out because there is a limiting belief for other people where a million just it's too much. You can never do it. And as you expand as an entrepreneur, as an individual, as a business owner, you start to understand how some of those limiting beliefs were this big. And the things that come in the future are much, much greater. It's like there was a point in time where if I had $10 in my bank account, I felt great because at least it wasn't negative one or negative 36 because Bank of America hits you with those $35 service charges, right? And then there's right. a time where $1,000, if I if I had less than 1000 it was scary. And then it, it, it elevates. Why does it elevate? Because we start to understand there's an abundance that exists, you know? And I come from... Uh, and I, I won't or I will. It's up to you dive deep in this. I come from a childhood that was very disruptive and very, uh, mm -hmm. you know, physical abuse, mental abuse, all that type of stuff. Right. So the shift in what it is that we determine and decide to do is, you know, it, it's, it's massive when it comes to that stuff coming from a belief this big to one that's, you know, you can't size it. You can't size it on a screen. Um, the reason why I bring that up. Is how do you separate yourself from that? Because. Or how does that help design who you are today? Because there are people who grow up with a rough childhood that's yeah. uh, completely fall apart. And then there are people who, you know, make something of themselves based on the childhood they were given, similar to veterans, right? Yeah. There are veterans who come out of war and 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 make nothing of themselves because they they are 
to destruct. And there are other people that use that destruction to create some positivity. So how do you personally, how do you separate yourself from growing up in the nature that you did to where you're at today? Um, I think the biggest thing, you know, resiliency is a word that's always used, but it's resiliency for the fact of survival. I, I was able to take some of the things that happened in my childhood and turn them into gifts. For example, I used to have to listen to how a key sounded when it entered into a door and how the car sounded when it pulled up in the driveway and how the door closed to determine if my ass was going to be beat that day, to determine if I was going to eat, to determine if I was being locked in my room. Um, I mean, there was times in my childhood where I was fed rotten food and, and drank out of a toilet to get water, right? To so, so that's one thing. Reading people is a, is a huge thing that I attribute my childhood to being able to do. But as I grow older, see, I, this didn't just happen. I didn't just wake up one day and say, I want to help people. In fact, I had anger issues. I had drinking problems. Uh, I used to love to fight. I used to do all the negative things that you would associate that type of childhood with. And guess what? I got a pass because people would say, he got beat as a kid. Of course he's angry. That's a pass. That's a pass that society gives for disruptive behavior based on what we think is okay because of what I experienced, right? I'm not out here molesting children, yet I was molested as a child. It doesn't make it okay, but society gives people the excuse to okay it because of their past. What I wanted to do is I wanted to impact the people that were going through what it is that I experienced in a positive manner. So it's okay if you've been abused, it's what you do after that abuse. You can take it, you can turn it around, you can put it into something positive. I look at my children and I think to myself, would I ever want them to live what it is I went through? I'm also, in, and I'm not going to dive big into religion or anything like that, but I feel like God picks its its finest and greatest warriors to go through some of the darkest days in order to pass on a message that says, hey, you can do this. Here's proof right here. And it, it doesn't matter the level of trauma. People are put through things they can handle. It's what we decide to do with those things and the lessons we decide to share that makes up where we go next. Right. It's um, funny. I, I, uh, I, I told my, I told my wife, I had read something years ago and I tell my wife all the time, I go, you know, God only gives you what you can handle. Yep. I go, I wish, yeah, I wish he didn't trust me so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> because <laughs> sometimes you're like dude like for real you know <laughs> like a joke like what's going on? sorry i, I use foul language for time I, I apologize no I'm, you're fine bro that's perfectly okay on my part okay. trust me good, sometimes good, good. you look up and you're like dude like seriously like why what like haven't i proven myself you know what yeah. i mean yeah and yep, exactly for some reason he's like mm, no, not yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> we need you to do this. You know, yeah. we need you to do this. We need you yep. to do this, you know? Yep. And, sure. and, uh, and, and fortunately for us, you know, we chose to be entrepreneurs, which means yep. that we are consistently on the battlefield and, yep. and, and consistently in high level stress situations. Mm -hmm. And it's and and every, every entrepreneur, I mean, I'm not going to say every, but some of the biggest, strongest entrepreneurs, uh, everyone from Elon Musk to Donald Trump to, you know, you, you name them, they've said something along the lines of if it, the only way to be truly successful at entrepreneurship is to be able to handle stress. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That was it. Like, they're like, if you can handle what's thrown at you because it will get thrown at you, yep. you're going to be all right. Yeah. You know, and, yep. and, and that's kind of sort of in the line with what we were just talking about is how we take. The, the things that have happened to us yeah. and turn them into positivity, turn them into the lives that we live today. You know, it's funny that you mentioned, you know, having gone through child abuse. Um, I didn't have a very good father, a, a non-existent father for, for that matter. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like, you know, I'm a great father, but yeah. that came with a lot of understanding and a lot of struggle and my oldest kids didn't really benefit from that when they were younger because I was still in yeah. learn mode right yeah. I was 19 20 21 years old you know and so so you know but the but like the younger ones are getting all the benefits right like yeah. even my older ones are like dude come on you know like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like you know when you guys were small it was a very different life for me okay i right. you know i didn't have as much money i was still learning how to do this like you know i was a dad with training wheels you know yeah. 
And yeah. it, and it's it's funny because I, I read something not long ago. Um, let me see if I can remember this quote really per really well, but it said, I, I I am the man that I am today because you weren't. Yep. Yep. And and that's like, oh shit, like I got goosebumps right now, just just saying that out loud yeah. because it it proves that we don't have to follow the path. We don't have to do what was done to us. The free pass exists because people are fucking weak. Yep. Yep. And, 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 and there's, there's a group of people out there that go, well, if it happened to you and you did it, well, that seemingly makes sense. No, it doesn't. No, not at all. Right. Because we all have a right to choose. Yep. We have a choice we can make, you yep. know? And so if you've been, physically abused, sexually abused, uh, malnutrition, so forth and so on. And then you grow up to do the same thing to your kids. You're basically a piece of shit, just like the previous person. Oh, and, and I, I just, I can't, I can't see that free pass. Like that free pass just doesn't, it doesn't exist for me. It doesn't make any sense for me. I, I don't, I don't, right. I'm not okay with it. I don't think it should be given. Like if you make a decision to sexually assault a child, you should be hung on the street, like yeah. straight up. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it should be fucking 1865 again. And you should be strung up on a fucking light post in the middle of New York City. Like yeah. that's how I feel about it personally. Yeah. That one day these comments are gonna come back and haunt me because I'm sure I'm gonna run for office somewhere somehow. And uh <laughs> you, you will speak to your people, by the way. If these comments ever do come back to haunt you, your fucking people are going to be standing there saying, hell yeah, because those are the people you want beside you anyways. If they can't support what you just said, then they're part of the fucking problem. They're part of the reason why people get this, this excuse to not be okay. And, and listen, I understand people need to have, you know, maybe that, that some counseling or some lessons or some whatever. But at the end of the day, if you do X, you deserve Y. And if you don't support that, it's okay. There's 8 billion people in the world. I only need a small section to like me. You only need a small section to vote for you, and you're good to go. So, yeah, yeah. please deflect yeah. the ones that don't, you know. Yep. We'll figure this out, bro. We'll yep. figure this out. Yep. I um. <laughs> I was I was looking at you know thinking about that comment and right now the Tate brothers just came into my head you know yeah. and uh, Andrew Tate and his brother got arrested again yesterday yep. uh, taken into custody in Romania yep. uh, for for charges in the UK from 2015 to two thousand or 2012 to 2015 so you know good 12 years ago something like that and uh, and and the 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 charge was sexual aggression mm. from you know. Yeah. To, between 2012, 2015. Yeah. And it's interesting because <clears throat> I know a lot of people are on the bandwagon. It's a fucking distraction. This and that. The Matrix, whatever is nonsense, right? But right. I I like to take a step back and go, what if it's true? Yeah. Right. Now, now he speaks his voice and people don't like that. So there is, I do agree that they're coming after him. For sure. But what if it's true? Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he ain't a saint, bro. Yep, you know right. what I mean? So, right. You know, this is he's not Saint fucking Tate. He's you know, <laughs> like, you know, and so so I I, I kind of stand back and go, they got arrested again. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. It, like it they gotta fight their you. battle, and because yep. what if it's true? I, yep. I don't know. I wasn't there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yep, exactly. I don't know. It's well, it, and it doesn't change you, right? The, the the thing we tend to do, and I say we, I'm speaking in general terms, we give things too much fucking value that have nothing to do with us. I, I would challenge the listeners of your podcast that next time they they come across a situation, you ask yourself, is this going to be important to me in 30 days? Okay, yeah. maybe the answer is yes. What about one year? Maybe the answer is yes. What about in 10 years? Because time doesn't give a fuck about you. Time is ticking right now. I could stop talking entirely and that ticker right there will continue to move until I say something again because time don't give a fuck what I have to say. So the question is, 
why why do we engorge ourselves in these situations that have nothing to do with the benefit of ourselves, our survival, our family, those things? And someone could say, well, the fact they're being arrested has to do with my survival. You don't know. Maybe they were aggressive sexually towards somebody. And now you're defending and you're utilizing your energy and your time that could be contributed back into your success and your business and your family. Yeah. You're doing it yeah. for a fucking stranger that doesn't care. Which is yeah. why, which is why I said I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Because it doesn't whether they get arrested or not, or murdered in jail or not, or shut up or not, yep. doesn't affect my life at all. Right. <laughs> I know people like to think that it does. Yeah. But it doesn't. No. You know. I know people yep. like to think that what they're saying out there is helping put the word out on what's happening and the Oscars and people drinking baby blood and I don't know what else. Like, you yeah. know, but that shit doesn't change anything for me. Nope. AJ, I'm nope. not I'm not there. It doesn't yep. change anything for me, my kids. It doesn't affect their volleyball. It doesn't affect their education. It doesn't affect right. any of that nonsense. Yep. I just don't care. You know, I'm happy to talk about it. I'm happy to debate it. Stuff like yeah. that. That's why we got podcasts, you know. But I just don't care about it, man. No, there's too many things to care about. <laughs> yep. And 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 you nailed those things right in the head. Family, your kids, your career. You know, yep. even though you say you took a step back, which, by the way, I do want to say something because I know some people listening to this podcast right now are going, "Okay, he took a step back, but how's he taking care of his family?" You yep. do own property. You have a yep. portfolio. Right. So you made the moves necessary to be able to take a step back. Otherwise, if you yeah. didn't have that portfolio, you might have to do one or two more loans a month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Diversification. Um, it's funny. I want to tell you how I acquired some of that portfolio uh, just so people can can see the shift in mindset. I hit a meme stock pretty significantly. And the first thought that came to mind is I can go pay cash for a Lamborghini right now. And then the second thought was, I can acquire one, two, three, four, five, you know, how many ever properties based on this that just happened. My decision went to the acquisition of properties because it created the legacy. The childish yeah. mindset was, what color Lamborghini do you want, right? The Lamborghini wouldn't have changed anything in my life except my ego for this long a time because when it came time to put a 15 thousand dollar clutch in it i may not have been able to afford it i enjoy the freedom i experience today because of partially that decision to do the responsible financial thing even though some people say well yeah but you wouldn't have had the money otherwise yeah but i did and i really feel like my mom who's my mom's past she's passed but i, I really feel like she had a, a part to do with it right i really feel like the evolution of the world and what i contribute to it also gives back so I feel like this was a sign and a test of me as an individual. Are we going to do the right thing or are we going to fuck off some more money and do the wrong thing? And, and the decision was to do the right thing. <clears throat> well, brother, I first want to say thank you for all that you do uh, and supporting veterans and coaching people. Now, are you coaching end users, buyers, or are you coaching other real estate pros too? So I'm my main focus is in the mortgage space. I coach mortgage professionals uh, and it's more systematic to provide a high level experience for the client plus the client retention. I also coach some title companies uh, and closing attorneys and then a couple real estate agents. Real estate isn't as big as my focus, but I focus more on the systematic approach and retain retaining existing clients and attracting new ones. Sweet, man. Well, I, I definitely appreciate what you do for the industry. I definitely appreciate what you do for veterans. And I definitely appreciate that you are a family man and a God-fearing American. So I, I do love that. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, guys, um, we're going to cut it off and we're probably going to do a part two with AJ if he will allow it. And yeah. um, and 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 I, I really hope that you enjoyed this conversation. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to name this podcast like Veterans Matter. You know what I mean? Like it, it just because, you know, at, at the end of the day, it, a lot of people are turning a blind eye to them. And a lot of that blind eye doesn't come from desire not to help them. It comes, like you said, from ignorance, from not yes. knowing, yes. you know, yep. and if we could help people know more and educate them on on the VA process, 
and, and help them educate their sellers on the VA process, more buyers would get accepted, more yeah. VA loans would be yeah. done, um, and, and more veterans would find financial freedom in the country that they fought for rather than having to leave to find it somewhere else, which I'm finding happening more and more. A lot of my vets are selling their homes and heading to other countries to be yeah. able to afford life on their benefits, you know? Um, so, <clears throat> you know, creating this opportunity for them is big. So if you're listening right now and you have questions about this, you know, hit it, do the comment thing, right? Like go down, you got this video, you got this podcast, go into the comments, make a comment, ask a question. We'll come back to you. We're going to make sure AJ's information is on there as well. And, and in the comments. So if you want to reach out to AJ directly, you definitely can. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you've listened this far along, chances are you probably enjoyed this podcast. So hit the subscribe button, like, comment, share, get it out there for people to hear. If anything, if you, I'm, I'm on episode, I think this is episode 239 guys. If you have listened to all my other podcasts and you love them and you've never shared one, this would be the one to share. Get this information out there so people can hear it, people can enjoy it, and uh, and we love you guys for listening to us. So thank you very much. We'll see you guys on the next podcast. Thanks, AJ. Thank you.